how to eat so you can lose weight and keep it off. Oh, welcome guys, welcome. So glad that you are here. And we're here to get into this free four part video training series covering all the areas you need to lose weight and keep it off, which are nutrition, fitness, health, and the mind body connection. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is Chris, uh, Chris from Complete Health Development. And in the short video, I wanna show you exactly how to structure your diet so you can finally lose uh, the weight that you want and keep it off. So I created this video for you because I wanna show you exactly how to eat step by step in order to lose weight and end your confusion with food. And what can happen for you when your nutrition is no longer confusing and how achieving this will give you a better quality of life so imagine what could happen if you were no longer stressed out about what to eat every day and as a result you were finally able to lose the weight you want and have more self-confidence so think about what all of this will mean for you all right so uh thank you for spending this time with me and uh learning about nutrition is very important one of the key uh important areas for you to transform your body now you are in the right place if you're unsure about what to eat to lose weight, uh, you've tried several diets and failed, you're currently on a diet but not getting any results, uh, you would like to end cravings and overeating, and thinking about nutrition causes stress and anxiety. So you're in the right place today, guys, if all of these things are true for you and uh, you really want to um, learn up some ways. So who the heck am I? So who is this talking to you right now? So I am a weight loss coach for women, among other things, and I work with professional women who have been struggling with weight loss for a long time and quite often feel like they're always in an emotional battle with food. As a result, they feel bad about their body, have low self-confidence, and even though, even though they know what to do, they just can't seem to lose weight and keep it off. So that's who I work with, and professionally, I am a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, a holistic nutritionist, a weight loss coach, a personal trainer, uh, a EFT practitioner, and a founder, and the founder of Complete Health Development. So uh, EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique, and FDN stands for Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Practitioner, just to break those down for you. And my goal is to help a professional woman to lose fat naturally, and I'm hoping to help uh, at least one million women and men uh, transform their weight and their bodies and their health, okay? So that is my mission. And I hope you get a lot of information out from this today. When I'm not focusing on my mission and helping people with their weight, I enjoy relaxing by the beach and uh, being someplace where it's warm and there I am right now, just uh, in that picture, just chilling, chilling on the beach, enjoying that sunshine. Okay, so here's what we're gonna cover today. Uh, so the foods you need to eat so you can consistently lose your unwanted weight, how to structure your meals so dieting becomes easy and you actually enjoy eating healthy, nutrition myths, and the things you need to stop doing immediately if you want to reach your ideal weight or lose weight and keep it off, and how to let go of perfection, occasionally cheat, and still get great results. So this is what we're going to cover today. And it's my commitment today to give you and to tell you everything that I can about nutrition in a short amount of time with the strategies I'm about to share, you'll be able to get started right away so you can see immediate results. Now, I know some of you may have additional questions or want to learn more about how to eat for weight loss so you can lose weight and keep it up. So for those of you who want to go further, I'll tell you how to do that at the end. My intention in this video is to teach you though, that you can't easily follow a diet uh, you enjoy and uh, so that you don't damage your health any further or gain any more weight. There are a lot of people who talk about nutrition, but what I find is that their focus is on telling you what diet is the best, which does not set you up for success. I not only work with clients on what to eat, but I also work on the mind-body connection, which makes sticking to your diet so much more easier. So let's dig in, guys, with point number one eating real food. So I can't stress enough how important it is to eat food as God intended. The food you eat should be real or natural. If your food is packaged, chances are it's not real. You should eat 80% real foods or in packaged foods and 20% foods that are found in packages. 
if that is necessary for you. So no fake foods allowed. And you can see here in this example, a uh, picture of some cereal, which is definitely a fake food because we do not grow uh, cereal. Okay, so that is something to think about. Eat healthy animal protein. So the animals you eat should be grown as they were intended to grow and eat what they were intended to eat. This means that chickens should be free to roam and eat things like worms, insects, fresh grass, and corn. And that cows should eat fresh grass and hay. So if you don't eat sick meat, you will not get sick. There's uh, too many of us are just eating sick animals and sick plants and then we're wondering why we're getting sick. So you definitely wanna be eating healthy vegetables because your plants should be grown in healthy soil with good natural fertilizer and free of all pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. As I just said, we're eating too many sick animals and plants, and then we get sick. So remember, you are what you eat. So try to eat local and organic whenever possible. So focus on these food groups, guys. When eating healthy to reach your ideal weight or to lose weight and keep it off, you need to focus on these four food groups. Healthy proteins, good fats, starchy carbs, and fibrous carbs. So those are examples of each of those. Uh, sweet potato is underneath starchy carbs in case you can't tell what that is. Um, so breakdown of the food groups. So here it is, I'm just gonna run through this quickly with you. Uh, so healthy proteins, starchy carbs, fibrous carbs, and good fat. So healthy proteins, things like chicken uh, and turkey, game meats, organ meats, beef with the fat, lamb and pork. You can always stop this video after this is done recording and just kind of get a good uh, idea of what these are, but I'm just gonna quickly run through these for you, uh, but it's a good idea. Uh, this is a pretty good list, uh, a good place to start. So lamb, pork, fish, eggs uh, with the yolk, protein powder uh, as natural and organic. Uh, so a good brand that is organic, uh, spirulina. Uh, moving on to starchy carbs, things like pumpkin, sweet potato, squash, uh, brown rice, uh, quinoa, gluten-free bread, things like that. Uh, good fats, raw nuts and seeds, salt, ghee, lard, almond butter, butter, avocado. Uh, definitely focusing on good fat, uh, grass-fed cottage cheese, plain organic, uh, organic grass-fed Greek yogurt, uh, organic grass-fed kefir, uh, and then fibrous carbs. So these are your fruits and vegetables. So asparagus, uh, bell peppers, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, uh, lentils and beans, eggplants, uh, romaine, lettuce, spinach, and the berries, blueberries, berry family, basically. So this is a pretty simple way of starting out with your eating. And uh, let's move on to point number two now. So how to structure your meals. So I want you to eat three large meals every day. Your meals should be spaced, about, spaced out every four to five hours or when you're hungry. So your three large meals will consist of a healthy protein, a starchy carb, a fibrous carb, and a good fat. So you're gonna, not gonna have any snacks in between just three meals. And I'm gonna explain this in a minute for you. So why only three meals? So the purpose of three meals is to trigger the fat burning hormone IGF or insulin-like growth factor. IGF is made by the liver and allows the body to tap into stored sugar and fat in between meals. Also, whenever you trigger insulin, you impede fat release. So we want to trigger insulin less frequently in order to maximize the fat release. So I hope this makes sense for you. Uh, so this is why I don't want you to have snacks in between meals. So you can see here in this example, is a picture of the pancreas. And the pancreas is responsible for, for producing insulin, which I call that your storage hormone, and glucagon, which I call that your release hormone. So when we are triggering insulin less frequently, we'll have a better environment uh, because we can't be storing and releasing at the same time. So if you want the body to release uh, fat, we need to produce some glucagon uh, more often than we're producing insulin. So we don't want to have the snacks because we're going to be triggering the insulin response. and We want to keep the insulin uh, down so we can maximize uh, the use of IGF and produce less insulin so we can burn more fat. So I hope that makes sense to you. That's why I do not want you to snack. So uh, portion sizes, we won't be counting calories, but we will be watching our portion sizes uh, when I'm teaching you. So this way how I'm teaching you how to eat. Uh, no counted calories is involved. Just pay attention to the serving size of each food item you consume. So healthy proteins will consist of one to two servings per meal. Starchy carbs will consist of one serving per meal. Sometimes we exclude the starchy carbs altogether. Good fat will consist of one serving per meal. 
and fibrous carbs will consist of two to three servings of fruit per day and or unlimited vegetables per meal. So it's very important that you stick to your portion sizes to make sure you get adequate amounts of nutrients and avoid overeating. Resist the urge to count and track calories because it is not needed. What is a serving size? So a serving size uh, for natural unpackaged proteins and fruits can be determined by placing the item in the palm of your hand. It should be no bigger than the size of your palm. Um, all other food items contained in a package will have the serving size on the food label. So that makes sense. Get into the habit, guys, of reading food labels and identifying serving sizes when you go grocery shopping. Okay, so we want that to fit in the palm of your hand. And we're gonna break this down for you in a sec. So here's a sample date in action with your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So here for breakfast, we're having some eggs uh, with some butter to fry the eggs. And we're gonna make a shake uh, with that. Uh, and in the shake, we're gonna have a banana and some spinach. We're gonna blend that all up with the shake. Probably we're gonna add some cinnamon, uh, things like that into the shake as well. Uh, and then our starch. Uh, one small medium boiled sweet potato. So that's an example of getting all the food groups, protein, fat, fruit, vegetables, and starch. Lunch is pretty much the same thing. Uh, same protein, fat, fruit, vegetables, and starch. So uh, here in, in this example, we're having one cooked seasoned chicken breast, 16 almonds, one apple, uh, some steamed broccoli and cauliflower, and a serving of brown rice, okay? And we're gonna, uh, of course, the, the cooked seasoned chicken breast will have some gravy with that, and we can just, Toss that over the brown rice and enjoy that meal. Dinner, the only thing with dinner now, we're going to remove the uh, starch of the last meal. And like I said, sometimes if we're doing any kind of uh, detoxing or cleansing, we probably take the starches out altogether. Uh, but in this training today, we're going to just be eating clean. And the last meal, we're gonna be removing the starches. Okay, so in this example for dinner, we're having one piece of seasoned grilled salmon. Uh, for the fat, we're gonna be having some olive oil, authentic olive oil uh, that can be traced uh, and organic, and some vegetables, spinach salad with red onions and baby tomatoes. We're gonna to top that with olive oil, probably even some balsamic vinegar. So that's an example of dinner. Uh, so moving on now, um, so that's pretty much how your meal should look like. Hopefully that makes sense. And we're gonna just, I'm just gonna talk about now some of the other things that kind of go with eating, like water and hyd hydration. So water is great. Um, just talking about water though, I'm just gonna point out, I like you to have your drinks and your water and things like that, your beverages. Hopefully it's just water really, guys. Uh, have those in between your meals. Try not to be drinking with your meals because it's going to dilute your enzymes that you need to digest your food. So it's better to hydrate in between meals and not with your meals because meal time should be for eating hydration should be in between so uh, water is great and you should drink lots of it however I don't want you to de deplete your electrolytes which are necessary for food balance in the body energy production and almost every major biochemical reaction in the body so don't force yourself to drink water if you're not thirsty because that could be a sign that we need to retain some of those precious minerals and we don't want you to be washing them out. So here's a little nice water drinking formula that you can uh, use. So one third of your body weight should be consumed in water. So you can use this formula to calculate how much water you should be getting on a regular basis and then try to follow this. So to calculate this, use the following equation. Your body weight times 0 0.333 will equal the amount of water you need in ounces. So for example, the calculation for a person weighing 150 pounds is 150 times 0 0.333, which will give you 49.95, which you can then round that off to about 50 to 50 ounces of water. Um, this is person should be having on a daily basis. So in addition to this, you need to add eight ounces for every 20 minutes of vigorous exercise and eight ounces for every bad habit like caffeine or alcohol. So uh, also, let me add to this, if you go to the bathroom to empty, to urinate, you also wanna replace uh, another eight ounces of water as well. You're pretty much you're getting rid of hydration. You should be uh, consuming hydration to replace what you've, what you've emptied. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Alcohol, the bad, bad mother alcohol. 
Uh, it's pretty difficult to have alcohol included in your life um, while you're on the road or the path to reaching your ideal weight, losing the weight and keeping it off. Uh, once you've gotten there and you've lost the weight, you can definitely you know, have a couple drinks here and there, but uh, having alcohol consistently is, uh, just makes it in a difficult environment. And we're gonna, I'm gonna explain this why uh, as I go through this and go through this with you. So basically you cannot have it both ways, guys. Uh, if you wanna get your body back and reach your ideal weight, you kinda must avoid alcohol until you've kind of gotten to where you wanna be. Cause inside of you, alcohol equals seven calories per gram nearly twice the amount of protein or carbohydrates, and it's the second closest to fat and caloric content. So alcohol can be absorbed directly from the stomach into the bloodstream without any help from the digestive system. Once in the blood, it has no place to go. There are no friendly storehouses to welcome it like other foods. Consequently, it must be used as an energy or heat source by the body and all the other food in your body if you've eaten at the same time you're drinking, there's more chances of that food being turned to fat. Um, it just, alcohol just goes to work so fast producing energy that other foods that we have consumed aren't given a chance to be used as an energy source. They aren't needed while alcohol has taken over the job of energy production. So consequently, the food that has, that isn't needed, and that has just been eaten, uh, transforms itself into fat in hopes that it will be appreciated at a later date. So this is how you get that fat stored on you, on your body, when you're eating and drinking at the same time. So in other words, alcohol can block fat burning for up to 24 to 48 hours as the alcohol is lingering in your body. So this is why I say that alcohol is just a mother, meaning a bad mother, uh, sucker, and it's hard for you to have this in your life on a regular basis and also achieve your uh, weight loss goals. It's best to have alcohol while, while you are, uh, after you've achieved your goals or very sparingly, okay? Because alcohol blocks fat burning. So salt and spices, uh, a lot of people think they need to avoid salt altogether, but it's definitely not true. You need salt. Adults need at least one and one half teaspoons per day just to supply their basic requirements of chlorine and sodium. Salt is important for digestion, adrenal health, brain function, and many other processes in the body. Unrefined salt is best because it also contains magnesium and trace minerals. Also be sure to add a variety of spices to your food so it tastes great, plus the addition of spices to your diet will increase your ORAC score. And your ORAC score is how you measure your antioxidants in your body. And your antioxidants help to combat or fight your free radicals. And your free radicals can damage your cells, uh, rendering your cells unhealthy and putting you in an environment that could be, uh, you know, could contribute to um, or increase your risk for cancer. Okay, so that is uh, what you definitely want to make sure you just have, you know, salts and spices in your life because they're really, really good for you. Uh, sauces and soups. So it would be great for you to make your own sauces and soups, um, definitely than buying the ones on the store. Uh, you can do this using your, your leftover bones from chicken, beef, and fish. You can make healthy and great tasting bone broths that you um and use as a base uh, for like your stews, your gravies, your soups. So definitely, if you can, avoid the store-bought soups and cans and the bouillon cubes as they have harmful addi additives and often contain MSG. And MSG um, can also shut down your fat burning for, um, I think it was up to about 48 hours too as well, for like a long period of time. It can really increase your insulin and that would just, as we showed in the example earlier, have an environment in your body where it wants to be storing, storing things and not releasing. So that can shut down your fat burning as well. So it's not beneficial if you want to reach your ideal weight. Definitely, um, you want to be making your own healthy soups and sauces. Fermented foods are also something you should look at, in, in including in your diet. Uh, you should also 
they have a lot of pro probiotic rich um, you know foods um, they're probiotic rich fermented foods and they also plant enzymes that help uh, digestion and beneficial bacteria that support good intestinal health and immune function so foods like sauerkraut pickles kimchi kombucha tea yogurt cheese and kefir are just some of the examples of fermented foods you want to try uh, having in your life on a regular basis so try consuming these foods they have you know probiotics uh, in them and it just really helps you to um not only the taste it's going to have that sour taste for you um but it's just going to do a lot of wonderful things for your gut and your digestion so it's just definitely really good to have the probiotics fermented foods kind of in your life it's really awesome so here's one of the things that i like to do so juicing uh i have to say it's like the secret weapon and it's a great way to give your body a fresh start and eliminate the sugar cravings and help you to uh, kind of reset your body, get you on a path to eating healthy and regularly. So especially if you have those sugar cravings, um, you know, juicing can help to eliminate that by, by flooding your body with an abundance of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants and phytonutrients. Really such fresh, clean, nutrient-dense energy uh, will reduce and eliminate the body's needs for sweets. So this will also lead to reduce inflammation and increase your energy. So I love juicing and I hope you will want to juice more in your life. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just, uh, you know, juicing uh, vegetables that you have in your home, some cucumbers, carrots, uh, some celery, stuff like that. Just juice them, uh, especially if they're like on the verge of going bad or whatever, or you want to use up some of your vegetables in your fridge. Uh, you can just juice some of those too, guys. It would be really, really great. So also, if you're trying to lose weight, juicing will get rid of the waste in your body because your body tends to store waste in your intestines, which often ends up leaving you feeling bloated and heavy. So juicing eliminates the waste from your body, makes you feel lighter instantly, and improves your digestive system. So that being said, uh, juicing is not a laxative, guys. It's a natural way to eliminate waste from your system that leads to weight loss, okay? So uh, juicing has many great benefits. Now let's move right along to point number three, uh, nutrition myths and stop it, as I like to call it, some things you should stop doing. So if you have been uh, led to believe that your diet should be low in fat, you shouldn't have butter, red meat, and eggs because they're bad for you and high in cholesterol, this is a big, big fat lie. Uh, as experts are Experts agree that ingesting these foods from healthy sources are extremely beneficial for your health. So new research has proven that a diet high in cholesterol and healthy fats are not the cause of heart disease and related illnesses. The problem lies from past consumption of sick animals or artificially manufactured foods like margarine. Okay, so when you have healthy fats, they are really good for you. So uh, fats are good. Um, Fats are extremely important, and if you've been led to believe that they're bad, you've been lied to, as I just said earlier. Uh, they're really important for cellular function and hormone production. In addition, good fats assist in repairing cells, and keeping arteries clean, and triglycerides down. In many instances, a diet too low in fats is one of the contributors to an absent menstrual cycle or amarenia, uh, PMS, heavy cramping and bleeding. Uh, these can be all uh, traced back to not having enough fat in our diets. So this is a problem seeing that many women face today. So don't get angry, get educated, and get some more fat in your life. Uh, good fats also help to metabolize the bad fats. They're good for your brain and will help your cells to fight inflammation. You want good fat on your side if you tend to be healthy and lose weight. The fats you should not consume, however, are cooking. Salad oils like canola oil, vegetable oil, and roasted nuts. Uh, the roasted denatures the fat in the nuts, making it less healthy. We want to have the nuts raw and not roasted or not heated because the heat, again, is damaging. Uh, supplements are good. If you have been told that you don't need supplements and that they're dangerous, this was also a lie because it's kind of hard to get all the nutrients from food these days simply because modern foods are void of nutrients and uh, poor farming practices. We may get some by making wise choices and eating organic, 
But a good insurance policy, guys, is to embark on a supplementation program that contains missing vitamins and minerals, uh, especially the minerals. We have uh, our body needs about 60 minerals on a regular basis. Most people may be getting 10 to 20 minerals. So over time, your body will break down and disease will set in. Definitely, uh, you want to make sure that you're getting, because even vegetarians and vegans and people that I know that, you know, they say that they're eating really healthy. If the soil doesn't have the minerals and vitamins in them and the plants are pulling from the soils to get the minerals and stuff that you need, you can still find that you're void of nutrients as well. And you can still develop illnesses just like anybody else. Uh, so this is why some people who are eating healthy, they could still not be getting the vitamins and minerals that they need. And guess what? You're going to get an illness too, just like everybody else. So definitely it's really important and it's really important to get a good quality vitamin and a good good quality supplements that your body could absorb and uh, that, that has a good formula. So definitely um, you can't just go get any kind of vitamins and minerals. Most of them don't work. So you need to get really quality good stuff, guys, for sure. Really, really important. So problem foods and habits. So uh, here are some foods that are going to be problematic for a lot of people. And uh, some of these practices you want to not do uh, if you want to stay healthy. So wheat, uh, contains the gluten and damages the gut lining of most people. So, uh, especially in North America, where it is said to be uh, loaded, sprayed uh, with lots of uh, Roundup gly uh, glyphosate. So definitely, um, it's going to cause a lot of problems. So definitely, we really want to avoid wheat as much as possible. Uh, barley contains gluten and damages gut lining of most people. Rye contains gluten and damages the gut lining most people. We've all heard about gluten these days and all the damage that could that could be done. Um, oats may contain gluten uh, because it's often processed uh, in the same places where the wheat, barley, and rye is processed. Uh, corn, it's often GMO, gen gen genetically modified uh, organisms, so GMO, uh, sprayed with Roundup. And uh, if it's organic, you can eat it. But if it's not, you should avoid it. Okay, soy is the same thing, often genetically modified, uh, sprayed with Roundup, which is the uh, chemical additive used to um, the hermicide, fungicide uh, that is used where the glyphosate is coming from. Uh, so definitely not good either. If, if the soy is in its whole form and it fermented, a little is okay, but don't make that a staple in your diet. So those are some of the things that are problematic. Continued on this list, uh, fried foods. Uh, fried foods gives too many, too many free radicals and produces uh, carcinogenic acrylamide. Uh, so um, really, really bad for you. And these are things that are, are carcinogenic acrylamides are really cancer causing. So you don't want really to be having fried foods on a regular basis, especially fried in those, in those um Process oils, uh, and like I said before, those are really, really bad for you because they're, they're pretty much rancid, uh, processed, and a good big sheet source of free radicals that will be dumping on your cells and killing your cells, basically. So oils for cooking or salad dressing, they're also oxidized and, uh, you know, could be, be a source of free radicals as well that will cause you inflammation, damage your cells. Well done red meat, rare or medium meat, Rare or medium rare is okay. Uh, they, were all, they will also be a source of carcinogenic heterocycamines, uh, which are going to be formed when the red meat is cooked under high temperatures. Grill marks are a sign that heterocyclic amines are forming. Uh, deli meat processed meats with nitrates. Uh, nitrates are carcinogenic and cause cancer. Soda, carbonated beverages near or with mealtime, like I said, interrupts digestion and absorption. You want to have your liquids between your meals. And definitely make sure that the water and what you're drinking your beverage is not carbonated. The carbon dioxide neutralizes stomach acid needed for digestion. So if you have poor digestion already, you're having soda with your meals, and you'll be lessening the chances of your absorption. Skin of a baked potato, yam, or sweet potato. Um, if you boil it, it's okay. Uh, you can eat the skins, but if you um, bake it, uh, the carcinogenic catalytic amines are formed when the skins are cooked under high temperatures, okay? So these can all be problematic for you. So you definitely want to avoid that. So uh, let's move on quickly and wrap up with point number four. 
Uh, and this is just a philosophy I want you to adopt with eating and how you should kind of approach um, dieting or eating or your nutrition on your path to reaching your, your ideal weight or to losing the weight and keeping, keeping it off. Because there really is no one perfect diet for everyone or one that trumps the rest. The diet that is currently working for you that encourages you to eat healthy, real foods, not processed foods or non-foods, that allows for 20% error is a diet that I would encourage you to be on. You can achieve your ideal weight on any diet that has these principles because nobody is perfect. Uh, and it all boils down to loving yourself. If you love yourself, you'll give your body all the things that it needs to be healthy. You will nourish it with only the best foods, water, herbs, and spices. You'll surround yourself with uplifting people and things that sing to your soul, spirit, and make you feel joy. This is how you lose the weight and keep it off. So definitely loving yourself is so, so, so important. And I believe in the 80% perfection and having a 20% allowance if you need, if needed, right? So uh, you want to relax from self-imposed diet rules. So have a treat occasionally. Treat means allow you to not feel deprived and have hormonal benefits like increasing leptin. And more leptin means a controlled appetite and a speedy metabolism, two things we need on our side to lose fat naturally. So great treats or foods like pizza or burgers Avoid or extremely limit sugary treats such as Twizzlers or M&Ms or, or any other kind of sugary treat. The more natural the food item when you're cheating or having your indulgence, the better. So 80, 20, okay? So 80% good, 20% bad. And you can get by and you can get great results. You can lose the weight and keep it off on 80% perfection, all right? That's how you do it. And I know that if you uh, implemented just one piece of information that I shared with you today, you will feel amazing. I covered some things briefly. You can always, uh, you know, stop the video and rewind, but um, definitely it's not a lot of rocket science, but you do need to be consistent. And uh, I know if you just implement just one piece that I've shared with you today, you'll see immediate results just like Reagan did. And she writes here and says, thank you, Chris Walker. I did it. I feel great. I've changed my eating habits. My energy level has increased. I go to the grocery store and get the healthy food. My kids are eating better. I count my steps during the day. I have lost 12 and a half pounds so far, and I'm determined to keep going thanks to you. So I love getting uh, testimonials and messages like this from people who just uh, implement this great information and transform their lives, right? So I want you to stay tuned for the next video, and I hope you've enjoyed this video today. The next video in this series is about how to exercise so you can lose weight and keep it off. But if you have lots of questions now and want my help, you don't have to wait until the next video. When I work with clients, we kind of go much deeper than I was able to today. Uh, and earlier, I promised that I'd share how you can take this even further. So if what I shared with you today resonates with you and you're ready to go deeper, I have a special invitation for you. My special invitation is uh, I want to invite you to a free weight loss breakthrough session with me. And we're just going to sit down and, you know, just find out how I can help you. Just talk to you, see what's going on with you, what you're doing, and figure out how I can help you kind of, you know, get what you want, get the body you want, find out what's standing in your way. Because in this, in this session, we'll look at what you're doing now, what's not working, uh, what's working, and my recommendations for your next steps. I have a limited number of spots uh, reserved over the next couple of weeks because I also see clients regularly, so I got to make time for them as well. If this is something you think you'd be interested in, I encourage you to sign up for a spot at the link below. Uh, no pressure, no sales, just real cool, and uh, you can just chat, right? So uh, go to www.completehealthdevelopment.com slash free session with Chris, and uh, I can help you help you as much as I can in the time that we have and uh, help you to be your best. So that is it. That is all I have for today. See you in the next video. I love sharing info that I know will help and I can't wait to hear all about your amazing results. So let me know how you're doing. Uh, drop me a line. Here's my contact info in case you need it. Uh, 888-430-6068 is the number to dial and chris at completehealthdevelopment.com. 
So I'll see you in the next uh, training video uh, as we get into the fitness. And uh, hopefully this helped you out. You have yourself an awesome day. And I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.